Hello everyone, welcome to Sweet Sunshine Playtime and Travel Blog. And today, me and my little nephew are going on a tri-bus ride yeah. to get to know Ooh. the Kansas City history a lot better because I never rode the trolley bus ride ever. So, come along as we get to know Kansas City from the narrator, narrator and some of the bus, the trolley bus is called Kansas City Fun Tours. And yes, I'm looking forward to go visiting 18th and Vine Jazz District, um, the New League Baseball Museum, Historic Westport, and get to know a little bit more about Thomas uh, Pendergrass. So, yes, come along and enjoy. It is the second largest union station in the U.S. Grand Central in New York is the only one bigger. The main station in New York, they had to redo the ceiling due to water damage. Now, during World War II, this was the busiest train station in the U.S. Over 678,000 passengers came through here. Wow. Can you imagine how busy that was? Now, naturally, after World War II, cars became the way of travel, which killed a lot of the train stations, including this one. This building said thank you for 13 years. Then we did something that's never been done before. Two states, Kansas and Missouri, came together and they did a bi-state vote. They raised over $250 million to save this building. Wow. Today it houses Science City, a planetarium, an extreme movie screen. Science City is a big draw in there. You'll notice a lot of kids running around in there. Is that? The extreme movie screen and the planetarium are on the lower level. There's also an exhibit hall in there, where Spider-Man's here right now. There are two restaurants in there as well, Arby's and Pierpont. Arby's was on all the train stations back in the day. Ray Harry figured everybody traveling by train and wanted somewhere to eat, so he opened up his restaurants. Harvey's was also the first restaurant to hire women as servers. They were known as the Harvey's Girls. They became so popular they made a movie about them starring Judy Garland. Now, does anybody back there know the nickname for Kansas City? Yes. City. City of Fountains, that's correct. There are actually over 200 registered fountains here in Kansas City. Rome, Italy is actually the only city in the world that has more fountains. But did you know that Kansas City actually has more functioning fountains than Rome does? Now, I'm going to show you some of the fountains on this tour, but I cannot show you all 200 of them because that would be a three hour long tour. And if anybody back there is old enough to remember, that did not work out so well for Gilligan. <laughs> now our first mountain is gonna come up here on our left. It's the, it's the Block Mountain. You guys have heard of H&R Block? The Block family is actually from Kansas City. H&R Block's world headquarters is here still to this day. That fountain shoots water 100 feet up in the air, does a neat little water show every hour. Now, Kansas City started a streetcar service six years ago. Oh, thanks. I call it the Disney Tram, and it looks like something you see out of Disneyland. If you can see it up here to the left, we'll go by it here in a second. You can see a clear shot of it. But it's absolutely free to ride. It goes north from Union Station right there, all the way up to the city market, making 10 stops in between, and turns around and comes right back. They're doing construction down on Main Street to take it all the way down to the plaza. They're hoping to be done by 2025. We clear this building right here. I want you to look out to your right at our Western Auto, Western Auto Building, right there. That building was built in 1914, same as our Union Station. It opened as a Coca-Cola bottling plant, then it became Western Auto Headquarters. If you look out in front of the trolley, you see all these buildings and warehouses on either side of the road. Those are being converted into housing as well. People are moving back to this city in droves. 
This area we're coming up to right now is called the Crossroads Art District. Through this 10 block area, there's over 200 murals on the sides of these buildings. Also down in this area, there are local artists. They have their own galleries and shops where they make either clothing, leather work, jewelry, you name it. If you get a chance, come down and check out and see what they got. See what they locally make down here. And you get a better clear view of the mural if you're on the right side of the trolley right there. Now let's try to point out. That's about as high as it goes right there. Jackson County Courthouse, but it has Andrew Jackson on it because you're in Jackson County, Missouri. 
of the other building is this one right here to the left. All right, so our city hall is 29 stories, the fourth largest city hall in the room. On the 28th floor is an observation deck to look out all over the city. Now in front of the trolley, that used to be Sadie's Bar. It was the wildest and craziest saloon in the Midwest. It was even an after crawl that was very close to it. We turned it into our police headquarters. <laughs> Probably the same customers, you never know. Now a lot of them, though, would make sense. He owned a concrete company. They love to plant things in concrete. Now the group around here that gave us the most trouble, though, was called the Black Hand. They were a Sicilian group. They came over from Sicily looking for work. They couldn't find any, so they paid off somebody back there at City Hall to find out how much money you made. Then they would send you a letter saying, take this amount of money at this time and place, or die. Sign the Black Hand. And you either paid it, or they threw you or somebody you knew off of a cliff. I want to show you where that cliff is here a second. Mm -hmm. Why don't you get off the now if you look up past this little tree line right here, that big building right there on the left, that is our... They found over 50 different bodies tied to that black hand organization at the bottom of Now if you look out in front of the trolley right here, that is the Missouri River Valley. The river is dead. Alright, some of these roads are not the greatest. Now I'm going to take you to the original downtown. It was not known as Kansas City back then, though. The little town of Independence is behind us by about 12 miles. The little town of Westport is to the left of us by about 3 miles. I'm going to take you through Westport at the end of the tour. Down here on the river, there used to be a perfect rock formation where they pull in steamboats and unload the goods and ship it by wagon down to Westport. This was called Westport Landing. What people don't realize is that Kansas did not become a state until 41 years after Missouri. So for four decades, if you wanted to take any goods out with you on your tri trip out west, you had to get it here. Now if you look in front of the trolley at the building right up here, the brand new apartment complex is the apartment complexes that they built down here as well. Now this, all right, coming up here to a city market. It is a farmer's market every day, but it's a city market on the weekends. There's locals that come out and show you what kind of locally grown produce they have for sale. They also have any like crafts and stuff like that for sale down here. One of the best things to do down here though too is called the Speedboat Arabia. It was a ship that was heading up the river in 1856, hit a snag, and sank immediately. Everybody got off board safely except for the poor donkey tied to the ship. I'll finish more of the story of the, the Steamboat Arabia, but I want you to look down here to the right, and that is our city market right there. Like on the weekends, like today it's finishing, it's finishing up now, but on the weekends if you pay for parking down the Union Station, hop on that streetcar and come down here. It looks like a fair down there. It's all kinds of tents set up, food trucks set up down there. That way you don't have to fight for parking, fight all the crowds and stuff. Well, it's that a steamboat Arabian. It's that boat. They found it in a farmer's field near Parkville, Missouri, under about 40 feet of river mud. They said when they opened it up, everything was perfectly preserved. They said it was like walking into Walmart in 1850. A Civil War collection in U.S. history. There are over 200 different goods from 1856 in that shop down there. It's right down in the city market down there. They said when they popped open the pickle jars, the pickles were perfect. They said when they popped open the wine bottles, the wine was perfect. Now I don't know about you guys, but I would not try any pickles from 1856. But I'd give that wine a shot, though, wouldn't you? Yep. If you look back here to your right at the Lewis and Clark mural. Now, if you guys know your history, we did the Louisiana Purchase for France where we purchased it for seven cents an acre. Some consider that the greatest land acquisition deal in U.S. history. But we didn't know what we purchased, so we sent out a Louis and Clark there to map it out. 
Now, if anybody is wondering where Kansas City got its name, right in front of us is a valley. At the, in the middle of that valley, there's a river called the Kansas River. Along that river used to be a big Indian tribe called the Kansas Indians. So for a while there, we were known as the town of Kansas. Then they started adopting the S, and we became the town of Kansas. When we hit over 30,000 residents, they made us do a legal, or a vote for a legal name change. That's where we came up with Kansas City. Now, do you guys want to know what came in a very close second? Yeah. You are, yep. Who, who said that? You, you're right. Yep. You are almost visiting Possum Trot, Missouri. Rabbit Run came in third. Now I wonder if we were Possum Trot, Missouri, what would we call our football team? Possums? Possum Trotters. Possum Trotters? Now imagine you were sitting right here in 1850 in a covered wagon. Looking off the right right there, that hill over there is actually Kansas City, Kansas. So you'd be looking out into the wild west if you were sitting right here in this spot. Now we're going up to the garments history. Kansas City used to supply 25% of the U.S. garments. New York is the only town that supplied more. We had one of the most famous dressmakers though. Her name was Nell Donnelly. We called her Nellie Dawn. She was the one that made the dresses to where it fit any size woman off the rack they had to be tailor-made. Now if you look out here to the left, right here at this brown building with the lamp on the outside, that is our garment museum. Oh. Got a nice little Nell Donnelly section in there. Well, Nell Donnelly was making about a million dresses a year from early 1900s all through the 50s. She became so famous that she and her chauffeur got kidnapped, actually, by a group of thugs. She was dating a senator at the time named James A. Reed. Well, he went down to the Mafia and told them, hey, you need to find Nell Donnelly or I'm going to come down so hard on Kansas City that you're going to never know what hit you. So the Mafia set out to search to find her. When those thugs that learned that the real, actual Mafia was searching for her, they threw her out on a street corner, her and her chauffeur. She was unharmed. They didn't want no part of that. Well, she ended up donating a piece of land that just that east of her yeah, just east of Lee Summit out there, the James A. Wildlife Refuge area. Right here to the left, that's the original Coates Hotel. It is the only building in downtown Kansas City that I think belongs in New Orleans. Now when we come through this light right here, I'm going to go as slow as possible right here, but I want everybody to take a look out to the right and up. You can see a dome up there. That's the Immaculate Conception Church right over here. If you look up, you see that gold dome over there? That is 24 karat gold leaf. It used to be copper back in the day. So on those cattle drives, when they were headed up here and saw that shining in the distance, they knew they were headed towards money. The reason why is because down this hill right here is our West Bottoms. Used to be a lot of slaughterhouses and stockyards and stuff down there. Now if you look up to your left, this building right here, that is our Bartle Hall. It was named after Roe Bartle. He was the mayor that came in and after that Pendergast mess and he cleaned up this town. He was a big man. He was about six foot five, four hundred pounds. His nickname was the Big Chief. My favorite thing that he did for Kansas City though was he went to Dallas, Texas and convinced Lamar Hunt to move his football team up here. They were known as the Dallas Texans at the time. We couldn't really be considered Kansas City Texans, so they had to rename them. That's where they came up with the Kansas City Chiefs after his nickname, the Big Chiefs. So we were the Kansas City Chiefs. In 1967, we had the Kansas City A's here. Then we went a year without baseball because they moved to Oakland. And then Mr. Kaufman, who had made his money in part of pharmaceutical sales, he told his wife he wanted to bring baseball back to Kansas City. She told him if you do, then you need to put a fountain in the stadium. Other, there's no fountains in baseball. Well, when Kaufman Stadium opened, it had one of the biggest fountains in the world in it. So you can see who won that argument, right? Well, the Kaufman, they ended up setting up the foundation of money for the city. The only catch is the, money, the city cannot touch any of that money except for the interest that it makes. 
So the city has used some of that interest to build buildings like this one right here on our left. It's called the Kaufman Center for Performing Arts. Looks like that building that you see on, in Australia, right? It had two theaters in there. One's 1,200 seats, one's 1,600 seats. They're both perfect in acoustic sound. The symphony performs there, the ballet performs there. That building is on the top 25 must-see list in America. When I make this turn right here, I'm gonna show you one of the cool features about the roof up there. It might look very nice enough for the other car to catch up to it. The only way to make this turn right here, I want you to look up to the, at the roof. See how that looks a little grayish right now? Watch what happens when we move in front of it. Keep moving in front of it. And the, sun, the way the sunlight hits it, it changes it to where it looks like it. I didn't see it change. It changes it to where it looks like it's diamonds up there on the roof. Yeah, you'll be able to see it right here. Can't imagine how how bad that story is on a cloudy day, though. <laughs> it's bad right now too, though. I didn't realize though. <laughs> if you take a look out to your left, that is the original high school for Kansas City. Then it became a fine dining restaurant called the Webster House. They unfortunately did not survive COVID. So now I've heard like the symphony is going to have their like offices in there and stuff. Right here is the back side of the crossroads. To get your bearing straight. Remember that rock that I showed you at the beginning? There it is right there. See the murals on the side of the building down through here? Now we're going to be heading over to the historic 18th and Vine Jazz District. Now on the first Friday of every month, which happened to be yesterday, city actually blocks off 18th Street right here, going that way, for the local artists to come down here, set up tables, and they can show you what they they got for, that they make, like for sale and stuff, like their clothing, jewelry and stuff like that. And it used to go all down through here, but then it got too big. So they had to split it up. They split it up right there, and then they also closed off 18th Street down here off of Oak Street as well. If you look out here to the left, you see that mural right there? A local high school art class came down here and painted that mural. They painted it in four days to raise awareness for HIV. Now I'd like to ask people, that last person on there with the hat, the white hat, do you think they ran out of paint right there? Or did it do it like a man of many colors? Now this building right here on the left is the original Kansas City Star building. It opened in 1911. The same architect that designed that building designed our Union Station. His name was Jarvis Hunt. The developer found those lamps on the side of it down in the basement. He ended up restoring them and now the building looks like it did back in 1911. They're going to be subleasing out the rooms in there for, uh, for restaurants and for offices. Now we're coming over here to the old Crossroads Art District. Now it's called Brewer Valley down here. Because they have their own like microbreweries down here. They also have their own distilleries. One of those is right there, that little half moon building right there. They make their own beer down here. They make their own agave down here. You guys know what agave is? Tequila. They can call it tequila, so we call it agave. They make their own bourbon and vodka down here as well. Right here is where they, the city on the first Friday of every month walks off 18th Street. But a lot of the young crowd comes down here because of all the distilleries and all the bars and stuff down here. Now 
Now I'm going to go slow right here. I want you to take a look up this hill. Right past this building right here. See the original Mickey Mouse mural up there? No. And another spot I like to go slow on. It's right here. This is called Art Alley. Over here to the left. I'm going to stop right here a little bit and let you look down the alley. That entire alley is actually painted. That is not graffiti on there. Local artists come down here and paint it every few months. So if you come down here and look at it in a few months from now, it might be something totally different down there. Now Kansas City here, we're famous for our barbecue. Have you guys got to try Kansas City barbecue yet? Yeah. Well, you know we have more barbecue restaurants per capita than any city in the U.S. Well, they're one of the originals would be Arthur Bryant's. His barbecue sauce is like a vinegar based, a little thin, thinner, tangier sauce. Ollie Gates, who used to work for Arthur Bryant, learned how to do barbecue from him. His sauce is pretty similar. A lot of the other ones, like Kansas City Joe's, Smokehouse, Q39, they're all is like a molasses base, a little thicker, sweeter sauce. Every one of them has different like spices and rubs they use, different smoke combinations for the flavor, smoking of it. They're a couple of combinations. But they all do it the same. They do it low and slow. In low temperature, many hours, fall off the bone, tender meat. Mm. Kansas City Joe's here got voted for best pork ribs in America. Q39 here got voted for best burn ends in America. If you don't know what a burn in is, it's a little chunk of meat where it's charred on one side from the smoking. They throw it in a sauce and saute it until it's melting about tender. We call them meat marshmallows. Now Jack Stacks here was on the Food Network channel for their baked beans. They have a, they put the tray of beans in the underneath the rotisserie that's cooking all the meat. All the juices from the meat fall down into the baked beans. When I take it out, they put brisket in. They cut up brisket, put it in there, and they put it burn it in there. Now they go to Jack Stacks. You definitely need to try their baked beans. But Jack Stacks was also voted for best side dish with their cheesy corn. So if you go there, you need to try their, both their baked beans and their cheesy corn. And get a two meat combo with burnt ends and the pork ribs and it's going to be golden. <laughs> now you guys old enough to remember that song, I'm going to Kansas City? Yep, yeah, yeah. So they got some crazy little women there and I'm going to get me one. Well, it talks about the bulk that find on that song. That's six blocks to the left of us. The only thing left down there now is a is a selfie pole where you can take your picture in front of. Everything else will go down here right in front of you at 18th and Vine. That is the historic 18th and Vine Jazz District right in front of us. They got the gym theater in there. They completely restored the theater and now they host concerts in there. The Negro League Baseball Museum is in there. The American Jazz Museum is in there as well. Now, a lot of people like to ask me why, why the Negro League Baseball Museum is in there. It's because the Negro League was formed here. It was actually formed right here in this building right in front of us to the right. We got the Kansas City Monarchs here, which is like the, the Yankees of the Major League Baseball. They won quite a bit of the championship. I'm going to slow down right here. I want you to take a look back to your right right here. There's the mural for the Monarchs right there. The big one up there is Buck O'Neill. Satchel Page, he's up on that wall. He pitched into his 60s. Well, let's take a picture of him. The most famous up there, though, will be Jackie Robinson. You guys know who Jackie Robinson is, right? He broke the color barrier to Major League Baseball. But did you guys know that Jackie Robinson's the only baseball player? Baseball player has his number unanimously retired from every team. No, no team can wear number 42 in you. Now if you look out to your left right here at the castle, that used to be a jail. The inmates helped build that castle. It's one of the most haunted buildings in Kansas City. 
Unfortunately, the castle has sat vacant for too many years, so I've heard it's kind of, it stays their number. They're going to tear it down and put an apartment complex. Oh. One thing I hope, though, is those hauntings that are in the castle go with the car apartment complexes. Well, maybe I go with something right. <laughs> now, Kansas City, we're proud of our fountains. Did you know the first fountain that was donated to Kansas City was actually had a purpose? It was donated to us by the Humane Society. When you guys hear the name Humane Society, what do you think of? Dogs and cats, animals, right? Did you know it was also for the protection of women, ch women and children as well? So that first fountain that they donated to us had a lion's head at the top to where women could go up and take a drink out of. It had an overflow basin in the middle to where dogs or, or horses could go up and take a drink out of. And then it had an overflow basin on the bottom to where dogs and cats could go up and take a drink out of. So it served its purpose. Our fountains to this day do not serve a purpose now. So I do not go up and take a drink out of one of them. You guys have heard of Montezuma's Revenge? Maybe praying to the porcelain goddess if you try to do that. Now we're going to be coming over here to Hospital Hill. Ever since the 1980s, or 1880s, sorry, there have been hospitals over here on this hill. First thing that I'm going to do though, is when we go across this bridge right here, I'm going to go kind of slow right here so you can see a beautiful view of the skyline of Campbell City. And we'll be right in the middle of the bridge so you'll be able to see it through the bridge, the grades of the bridge. Legoland down there. 
You cannot get into Legoland without a kid, so if you do not have one, bring one. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> There's also a Sea Life Aquarium down there. You do not have to have a kid to get into Sea Life Aquarium. So you don't have to bring a kid. What about the what? The kaleidoscope. The kaleidoscope? I don't know on that one. I, I actually do not know on that one. I'm sorry. I know one of the best things you can do down there, though, is the Hallmark Visitor Center. It tells you about all the history, like the, all the things the whole family was behind in our lifetimes. And it's a whole bunch more than just greeting cards and postcards in there. I know that. They have a Winston Churchill section that gives you, like, shows you all the artwork that he did for the Paul family. It has a uh, Walt Disney section. That would be my favorite one they have in there. Or it has a letter to where you can walk up and to and read that was signed by Walt Disney, written, written by Walt Disney to the Hall family, giving them permission to use every Disney character for life for free. Much of that whole letter is worth a lot of money now, right? Another thing I like to show people is that cemetery right there. That was the original cemetery for Kansas City. What's unique about that cemetery, though, is there's at least one soldier in there from every U.S. conflict, including the Revolutionary War. Now, some of the stories that like we found while doing research for you guys, my favorite story, though, is happened in 1901. In 1901, there were only two registered automobiles in Kansas City city limits. They both ran into each other on 12th and Grand. Total each vehicle. Can you imagine calling up your insurance agent saying, man, you're not gonna believe this. I just hit the only other automobile in town. I wonder if their license plates were number one and number two. Now you ladies ain't gonna believe this either, but they were both men drivers. You know why they were good drivers though? Because women weren't allowed, they were legally allowed to drive until the 20s or 30s. We had one lady on here tell us, yeah, legally, but we still did. I'm inclined to believe her because all the farm trucks and stuff like that. No. Now, other great things that you can do around Kansas City while you're here, you can tour the stadiums, both Arrowhead and Kaufman. Arrowheads will take you down onto the field and stuff. While you're on that side of town, though, the number one thing to do here, there are only 14 presidential libraries in the U.S. Kansas City, we actually have one of the best ones. Harry Truman is from the Kansas City area. He's actually from Independence, so his library's over there. His family home is still there, where he lived out his final days after he was president. So we have the Truman Library. They renovated it back in 2019. They were supposed to open it in 2020, but they couldn't because of COVID. And they finally opened now. And if you guys know your history, Truman made some of the tough decisions to, made one of the toughest decisions to end World War II. Truman was also famous for his quotes that he wrote. He wrote 20 different quotes while he was president. Did any of you guys know any of Truman quotes? Buck stops here, that's the most famous one that I hear the most. Another one that he wrote that I didn't know he did. If he can't stand the heat. Get out of the kitchen. Oh. Yeah, I didn't know he wrote that quote. Well, all his quotes used to be up along the hall of Congress. They took them down from Congress because of his favorite quote. His favorite quote stated, show me a man who gets rich in politics and I'll show you a crook. Yep. He did not like, they did not like seeing them in Congress, so they took them down. Yeah. You'll be able to see them down in his library, though. Other great things that you can do around here? We have the Kansas City Zoo, a couple miles southeast of this direction. They have a new elephant exhibit there, a new alligator exhibit. They have a new penguin exhibit in there. This weekend, they're opening up an aquarium in there. It's supposed to be in a full sea life and the freshwater aquarium. It is a very underrated zoo. It sits on about 200 acres of land. We also have full-blown casino-style gambling here as well. 
Missouri state law states that every casino has to be on the river, so all of our casinos are nine hole golf course. Another unique thing about that park right there is every tree known to the state of Missouri is inside that park. Now I could not name them all for you. They look like the hole looks like firewood to me. And another great thing down here is our our Eagle Scout Memorial Fountain. What's cool about that fountain is that carving weighs about 60,000 pounds. They said it the entrance way to Penn Station in New York. Whenever they tore down Penn Station to build Madison Square Garden, they donated the carving to us. What's also cool about it is it's right here to our left, but it's behind one of those trees I just told you about. So I'm going to crawl through this light right here and you guys look back over to your over your left shoulder. In that carving, they had a clock in the middle of it. Well, we took out that clock and put in the Eagle Scout medallion. On the either side of the medallion is two ladies. On the either side of the ladies is two eagles. So I'm going to crawl through here, look over your left shoulder, and you can see that fountain right there. You see the medallion? Yeah. See the two ladies and the two eagles up there? Yeah. That's a pretty cool fountain back there. That's a hidden fountain. Another one of our great spaces that we like to show people is right here to our left. It's Hyde Park. They host many different like sporting events there. They have different community gatherings held there. Now we're going to be heading up to our museums. We have the Nelson Atkins Museum up there and we have the Kemper Museum. The Kemper Museum is contemporary art. Nelson Atkins Museum is cultural art. They are both absolutely free to get into. The parking around on the streets up there is free. Uh, you can park under the museum, but they charge a little bit of money to do that. The Nelson family, they made their fortune with the Kansas City Star. So when they came down here to renovate this land up here to build their family mansions, they found millions of rocks. So instead of hauling all those rocks away, they decided to build retaining walls out of them. So this area up here is called Rockville, Kansas City. The retaining wall started at the end of this tree line right here. Now the Nelson family mansion is not here no more because they tore that down to build a museum. But the little daughter's house that was across the street from it is still here to this day. And I'll show you that. Right here, when we come around this curve, curve we're going to be on the back side of the Nelson Atkins Museum. This is where they uh, like do a little field trips and they unload all the buses and stuff at, right there. Look how massive that museum is, though, from the, just from the back side. Right here to the left is where their little daughter's house on the prairie was. They took out the four tennis courts that were right there. There's a private family that, that had bought it now, and they've been living in it while renovating it. They said it's taken them the last two years to renovate the chimney alone. Bet you had a few fireplaces in there, don't you think? Yeah. See all these houses back here behind here? That has a cool story behind that too. The Nelson family built those houses for the Kansas City Star executives. So if you were an executive for the Kansas City Star, you had to rent one of those houses. I bet you they took out your rent payment before they gave you your actual paycheck, don't you think? Now I'm going to take you around to the front of the Nelson Atkins Museum. I'm going to show you one of the most famous pictures that you can see on postcards and news nets. I'm also going to show you a tree. That you do not have to water, you do not have to rake up the leaves. But I definitely would not recommend standing under any lightning storm. See that metal tree right there? See that glass building right there? That is actually a glass maze. It's the only spot to where you can lose your kids for 20 minutes and never lose sight of them. There's your most famous picture right there. See the famous Southern Clocks, the Nelson Atkins Museum up there? 
Now, when did they start calling them Southern Pops, though? Uh, as far back as I remember, they were badminton birdies, right? Yeah. Now, like I was telling you on the parking and stuff, you can park right all along, all along this street right here for free if you wanted to go into the museum, because the museum's free to get into as well. There's, there's a little parking garage that they have underneath the museum. I think it's like $14 to get into it. So if you don't want to keep yours out of the heat, then you can go underneath there too. Right up here is the Kansas City Art Institute. Walt Disney actually took one of his first art classes at the Kansas City Art Institute. They close down this park right here every once in a while and they do Shakespeare in the park right there. Now we're going to be going over to the Country Club Plaza. The plaza was actually started by one man. His name was J.C. Nichols. He was a big subdivision developer back in the early 1900s. He ended up taking a trip to Seville, Spain. He fell in love with it. Then he came back here and told the city officials that he wanted to do the first mall designed around cars. They laughed at it. They told him those first two cars ran into each other. They're never going to last. They're just a fad. So they wouldn't help him. They said, listen, all I want you to do is clear the road. I'll do everything else. They still told him no. So he built it all himself. The most famous fountain though is right here on our right. That's our plaza fountain. It's yellow for the, I guess, awareness for the like cancer and children. It has it on a sign out there. I like couldn't exactly what it says, but I know it's a awareness for the children to be answering children. Welcome to the Country Club Plaza. It's a 16 square blocks. There's over 185 different shops, bars, pubs, restaurants down in here. If you look at the towers, you can see the Seville, Spain influence on them. 11 of the fountains on that list of 200 fountains is down in this area alone. If you look out here to the right, my favorite one, that is the Neptune fountain. He was forged in 1901 in France. We found him in his train car. They were gonna melt him down for scrap metal. We turned him into a fountain. Now when the city realized that Mr. Nichols was becoming successful down here, they came to him and told him, hey, we wanna put in some parking meters, make some money for the city. He told him no, he said, you guys wouldn't help me, so I'm not gonna help you. He told him that every parking meter you put in, I'm going to tear it up and throw it on the courthouse steps. They came in one night thinking that he was bluffing, and they put in 12 parking meters. The next morning, all 12 of them were on the courthouse steps. Ever since then, parking has been free in the most premier shopping center in Kansas City. I bet you they wish they would help them with the park or the road now, don't you? There are over about 4,500 different parking spots all through this area. There are different parking garages over here. There is one of them. We're absolutely free to park it. You notice all these people all walking through here and stuff. Like a lot of people come down to the plaza. Now another story that I like to tell everybody about here happened in 1933. There was a maintenance man, he was bubbling around in a closet, and he found a string of holiday lights. Well, he hung them up over a power shop doorway, and it's called Alta. Every year, it's kind of grown since then, and now every year on Thanksgiving night at 8 p.m., we do our holiday by the lighting ceremony. Thanksgiving night at 8 p.m. when they flip that switch from the plaza lighting ceremony, over 87 and a half miles of lights come on down to the plaza alone. All these hotels right here across, across the way are booked for years in advance because they average about 600,000 people here during the plaza lighting ceremony. Now, I've learned one thing as I've gotten older, though. You can come down here the very next night, the lights still look the same, and you don't have to fight the crowds. <laughs> so that's why the day after Thanksgiving is when we start our plaza lights tours, our holiday lights tours. We start at Union Station, where it's lit up beautifully for Christmas. We go over to Crown Center and show you the Mayor's Christmas tree. 
Then we come down here to the plaza and do a more in-depth. We go down each street and show you all the lights. Then we go down the Ward Parkway and do a mansion tour. Show you where Tom Bender guest house is. We also show you where Patrick Mahomes' house used to be. I'm sure you guys know who Patrick Mahomes is, right? Yeah. <laughs> now I'm going to tell you about the Battle of Westport. It happened about two blocks behind us and two blocks south on Warnall Road. It was the biggest battle west of the Mississippi. There's a park over there called Loose Park. It still has cannons there from that battle. That battle was about 30,000 Civil War soldiers fighting there. 3,000 men died. What people don't realize, though, is that battle actually killed the little town of Westport. They didn't survive. Kansas, like, Kansas City annexed Westport in the late 1800s. They've been part of Kansas City ever since. I'm going to take you up here and show you what you can do in Westport now. Show you what Westport looks like today. We're going to go right back by the Plaza Fountain. That Plaza the Fountain actually changes colors for different events too. Like for Red, for Red Friday, for the Chiefs. It changes blue for the Royals on opening day. Another one of our green spaces that I like showing people is right here to the right. Mill Creek Park. What's unique about that park is that track that you see people walking on is made out of rubber. So when you run along it, you bounce. It's supposed to be good for your joints. They also have, if you look across the way over there by the trees, they also have real life gym style equipment built into the park. Now right here, right across the street from it, that is our St. Luke's Hospital. It has a heart and vascular center in there. So if you overdo it in the park, you can walk right across the street. Now up here past this light is another fountain I like to show everybody. We'll see it as soon as we crawl through here. Over here to your right, when we get up here past this hill right here, that is our Vietnam War Memorial Town. You see the names inscribed on the wall back there? That is all the soldiers that lost their lives during Vietnam that were associated with Kansas City. Now, when you think of wagon trains heading out west, how often do you think they left here? About once a week, once a month? Every day. Every day, yep. They left here every single day. Westport Road, which is that stoplight right there, that was the wagon trail. That would have wagon trains heading out of there every single day. But we have to look at the old photos, and like they took a photo back then, and it was so busy coming through here that you couldn't even cross the bike on foot when they were traveling through here. This is what Westport is today now. You see all kinds of different bars down here, different restaurants. This is nightlife for the college folk. So if you're over 26 years old, you probably feel old here. The St. Patrick's Day Parade actually ends right down here. So if you come down here during St. Patrick's Day, and you probably see about 150,000 people trying to convince you that they're Irish. If you came back five weeks later, those same people will be trying to convince you that they're Spanish. Now, other great things that you can do around Kansas City that I can't show you. We actually have a NASCAR Speedway. It's the Kansas City Speedway. It's west on I-70. You can't miss it. They also give you the NASCAR experience there. What that is, is they take you around the track at 165 miles per hour. If you want an adrenaline rush, you can definitely go try that out. And guys, if you do that, you can take your wives over there too because that right behind it is Legends. It's a really big shopping center, shopping mall. They have a big Cabela's in there. They have a big Nebraska Furniture Mart in there as well. Now I know some of you guys are traveling, so you're probably not looking for furniture or anything like that. Do any of you guys like seafood? No. Yeah. Right there, mixed, mixed reactions back there. Yes, I know. Well, the ones that do, you probably like this one right here coming up on the left. I heard they're getting some great reviews. They do their seafood New Orleans style. Look at the front of the pictures on the wall right there. Look, they did 
thing called the Aroma Theater. Oh. You guys know what the Aroma Theater is? It's where we see the actors walking through a field of flowers, and you would start smelling the flowers as they were walking through. The Aroma, that thing failed miserably. Because every other movie back then was a Western. I bet you they did not like smelling those uh, buffalo chips, don't you think? Another one of our local businesses is right here to the left, Kansas City Light. They've been inside that building right there for the last hundred years. Now every town in America has their own VFW home. The National VFW headquarters is right here in front of us to the left. At that brown building right there? VFW stands for Veterans of Foreign Wars. They help soldiers get acclimated back into society after tour. They also fight for soldiers' rights. That building right there actually, actually has a museum in there as well. And you do not have to be a veteran to get into it. This church right here to the right is Our Lady of Perpetual Help. It's one of the busiest churches on Saturdays for weddings. As you can tell, there's already one going on right there now too. They hauled in thousands of tons of limestone to help build that church. They hauled it in by wagon. There's a carving in there, the, right behind where the pastor speaks. It's about 50,000 pounds. It's a marble carving of a cathedral, another cathedral. Right here to the left is our BFW fountain. Now, I don't know if any of you guys can see it or not, but if you look off in the distance, you see that gold dome sticking up in the distance? The one I showed you earlier downtown? Oh, yeah. So if you were traveling up here with your cattle drive, you knew you were heading towards money. Now I'm going to show you one more fountain on this tour. And I'm going to stop with the fountains for you guys. I'm going to be turning right at this light up here. I want you guys to take a look down to your left from that light. It'll be our firefighters memorial fountain. If you look down to your left right there, you see the two firefighters on that fountain? Yep. Yeah. Behind it are the names of the firefighters, like names inscribed into the wall of firefighters that have lost their lives there in the line of duty in Kansas City. The firefighters actually from around here come down here and help maintain that fountain for their fallen brothers and sisters. Now I'm going to take you up here to Penn Valley Park. I'm going to show you some of the cool things you can do up here. I'm also going to take you up here to the highest part of the store. Now, did you guys know that on those wagon trains, when they were heading out, they only averaged six to eight miles a day? Can you imagine the road rage they had probably back then? Now, on some of those wagon trains, if they were heading for Indi from Independence over here to Westport, this right here would be a safety lookout for them. Because right down at the bottom of the hill is the Kansas State line, so that would have been the Wild West. And look how far out into the Wild West you can see from this spot right here. See all the dangers that are lurking out in front of you? Ahead of you? Now, this is Pitt Valley Park. Some of the things up here that are some of the best things up here. I used to park for free up here. I always like telling people where you can park for free because that's always a great thing to know. Another thing is, if you're here during the weekdays, right here to the right is our Federal Reserve. Not all Federal Reserves have their own money museum, but ours does. It's absolutely free to get into. They have a money wall in there where you can go up and take your picture in front of $40 million. The only thing standing between you and it is a piece of glass. You just can't see that in the picture. They also have every bill and dollar point ever, or every bill and coin ever minted in the U.S. They have a five thousand dollar bill, a ten thousand dollar bill. Now, unfortunately, our highest bill is a hundred dollar bill because of all the drug trafficking. But the best thing that you can do up here is right in front of us. That is the World War One Museum. It is the only museum dedicated solely to World War One. That tower right there is 217 feet tall. You can actually take an elevator ride almost all the way to the top 
you just got that's about 45 stairs left afterwards. It gets narrower at the top whenever you go up there. That's why they don't have the elevator ride all the way up. But 29 million people were killed, missing, or injured during World War I. You see the Sphinx on either side of the tower? The one on the left is looking towards the east. It's supposed to be signified looking towards your past. Many of the sol like many of the soldiers didn't want to look at their past because they lost too many loved ones, so they have their eyes covered. The one on the right is looking towards the west, looking towards the future. Many of the countries at the time went bankrupt because of World War I. So it had, they didn't see any future in sight, so it has its eyes covered. Now if you look at the floor or the door of the museum, see that red flower up there? That is the red poppy. What that flower's from is in Flanders Field in Europe, they had a big battle. Thousands of soldiers lost their lives in that field. Well, they ended up doing just a big old mass grave where they buried bodies from both sides. The next spring when they came back to it, they had red coffee all over that field. So to celebrate the ending of the war, people in Europe wear red poppy pants on their collars and stuff like that. Some people here do too as well. But what a lot of people don't realize is that war it started in 1914. America did not get into it until 1918. And it ended in 1919. So we were actually only in it for a year. We ended up losing 100,000 souls still in the process, unfortunately. But when you walk into that museum in there, you go over a glass field, or glass floor. Underneath that floor is a red poppy field. Every each red poppy in that field signifies 1,000 lives lost during the war. The parking up and down through here is free. The museum does not cost that much to get into. If you get a chance, you should definitely check that one out too. Now I'm going to show you one more monument, and then I'll stop with the monuments on here too. See the full monument because I guess the city decided they forgot how to cut grass, but it's right up here on the left. The biggest thing I want to show you though, if you can look up there and see, like see the mom up on the top of there, do you see what she's holding in her hands? Here, I'll stop right here so you can get a closer look at it. Do you see what she's holding in her hands? The baby boy. That is Mr. Vanderslice. He is a self-made businessman millionaire. Well, the artist that made that sculpture, Mr. Vanderslice paid him extra money to break that mold so it would be one of its kind. But what's also important about Mr. Vanderslice is he also donated the land where the Kansas City Art Institute sits under the condition that they are the most affordable art school in the U.S. So every year they have to call around and make sure they are or they lose their funding. That's why I like pointing that out to everybody. Now if you look out here to the left, you see those buildings right there? That is the Midwest IRS Tax Processing Center. They process all the tax returns for basically the Louisiana Purchase. So if you did not pay your taxes, I would bet you they would love to hear from you. Now I got one more crazy story to tell you before we get back to Union Station. It happened in the 1930s. The FBI was helping transport Frank Nash. He was an escaped gangster out of Leavenworth. He got caught in Arkansas. They took him by train they escorted him by train up here to Union Station. They were going to take him by car back to Leavenworth. Well, they came out, like, see the two doors on Union Station right here in front of us? They came out of the ones on the right. When they came out, there were two cars full of thugs waiting for them with Tommy guns. They opened fire on them, killing everybody, including Frank Nash. People don't know if they were trying to break him out or if they were trying to silence him. Well, what people don't realize is, at that time, the FBI agents were unarmed and they had no authority. So Hoover, who was head of the FBI at the time, petitioned Congress saying, what happened in Kansas City can never happen again. Our guys need guns and they need to go off under authority. So Congress adopted the criminal justice system and 95, or 99% of us live by to this day because of what happened right here. It was called the Kansas City Massacre. FBI agents became armed. They became had all kinds of authority, 
Elliot Ness became famous for what he did in Chicago because of what happened right here. Now, that awning right there on the right, if you go over to there and look to the left of it, there's a plaque up there that tells you that story I just told you, but I just told you it much better. <laughs> to the left of that plaque is a mark, there's yeah. a green bench. Right behind that Daddy. bench, about six feet up on the wall, you can still see the bullet Daddy, holes from that thing, from that shootout. Eat, okay? So what you guys think? Did you learn anything about Kansas City? Oh yeah. Like it? Thank yeah. you for choosing Kansas City Fun yeah. Tours. Again, my name is Brandon. Oh. If you guys have any questions, just let me know. Like, so when everybody gets off safely, I'll answer them to the best of my knowledge. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your time here in our city. If you want to try any of the things out that I told you about, just let me know and I'll tell you, I'll point you in the direction of where they're at. Trolley bus is gone. About to go inside, okay?